want to talk about what is an interesting medium speed analog to digital converter structure, which is called an algorithmic EDC. Uh, it's one of two classical architectures for medium speed ADCs. Um, it is, in some sense, a very, it's sort of the core block is actually fairly simple in some ways and fairly complicated in others. Um, in, in, when you get into the details of the design. But it, there's some interesting opportunities here. Now it does require, like any medium speed converter, typically you have n clocks to do an n bit conversion. So if you need to do a four bit conversion, you're usually going to have four stages. If it has ten bits, it's going to be ten stages and ten clock stages, and so on. Um, since it is clocked, you're going to typically be using latched comparators here because there's really no advantage not to. So almost all the comparators are pretty much latched in this situation. And it also, what's also relevant is that there's a whole stage of pipeline ADCs where you actually can get sort of the, um, get still the average latency is going to be still this order n time uh, in terms of number of comparators. But at the same time, it's going to then be, um, but so that's the overall latency, but the in, sort of per sample latency is actually, is actually every single clock cycle I get an output. And so that turns out to be quite useful. And when you start to look at multi-bit ADC, multi-bit ADC pieces of cores of pipelines and stuff, it all follows the same architecture. So it turns out to be really valuable to kind of understand a whole range of families of ADCs, as well as the sort of core block itself is actually kind of kind of interesting and useful of what you could imagine doing with it. Um, at its very simple point, it basically has this very simple case of take the input. And from that perspective, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it. I'm going to compare against our, a known reference. If it turns out to be a one, I'm going to then get rid of, I'm going to eliminate a reference or some fixed amount from it, uh, subtract that, and then expand it back up to full range, which is usually a multiply by two, and then repeat. And you might think, well, OK, that would make sense. In fact, if it was multi-bit, you could imagine this being, say, a two-bit ADC I'd have one of four references to subtract, one of three references, of course, if it's zero, there's nothing there, and then expand it up by four. So you can imagine how this kind of extends. Um, and this works out a very, and what works out is in a simple circuit is you get actually a very nice uh, ADC structure um, in what looks like a fairly straightforward thing, because you have to build a sample hold anyways for any ADC, that's just a, that's just a thing. You have a comparator, which is in this case would be a latch comparator against a known reference against, and then you have these structures. And so if you look at what this would be, is if you imagine here's my full scale, here's my reference, here's my input value, I would initially say, look, it compares against a one. So subtract it and multiply it up by two it gives me at that point, though well, that's below the line, so that's a zero, multiply by two, it now is above the line. So now I subtract a reference and then multiply by two, I put it there. Well, it's well below the line, so it's now a zero. It's now multiply by two, it's still a zero. Multiply by two, it's still a zero. Multiply by two, it's still a zero. Multiply by two again, it's above the line, it's a one. And the output bit stream I would get would be the first one, then the zero, then the one, then the zero, 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 one. So I'm getting from most significant bit to least significant bit. And then at some point when I'm done with this particular code, I will flip the switch from coming from the feedback back from the input and allow it then to bring in the next input and repeat again. So I have just a little bit of control logic here to decide when am I done with my, my structure. And you might think, okay, this is great. Um, nice structure, not too many things that can go wrong here. Obviously you wanna make sure your comparator is at the resolution or better. Okay, so which means you need to be half an LSB kind of level to be able to deal with this comparison correctly to get at the, at the linearity of the ADC you're looking for. That's probably not surprising and people are like, yeah, okay, I, I could do that. But the issues then come in to be, well, I need to make sure the sample and hold is that high. Well, in any classical structure, I'm going to run into this anyways. So that's not a huge problem here um, because I still need to make sure it's that high. Now I am going to be looping a couple times, so I might have to wonder if the sample and hold needs to be a little bit better than, um, say, if it's an n-bit convert, it needs to be a little bit better than the n-bit. It kind of is and kind of isn't um, when you look at the structure. 
uh, you definitely have to worry about what the extra extra element, extra aspect would be on the residual, but that is something you can usually handle. Where it gets interesting is this block right here, right? And of course, the sample and hold has all the usual switch accuracy, clock feed through, charge feed through. You got to deal with all that. But the interesting part is this block right here. Um, is a multi is taking a difference of two values of which one is a known reference I can pull off. All right, that's kind of what this is doing, if you think about it. But I'm taking the signal, subtract a known value from it, right? and then I multiply it by 2 to get it back up to the full scale. And to make something that has a gain of 2 actually requires a bit, you know, precisely 2. Not just sort of 2, but within the resolution of the converter. That's a lot. That's a lot to ask. And so that turns out to be really interesting. Now you might ask the question, do I always need it to be within two or are there other things I can adjust? And the answer is maybe. And so it does turn out you have some fl flexibility on that value. You have some flexibility at the reference. You have some flexibility what you subtract off. And that turns out to give you some options. And it turns out if you're actually doing this in a pipeline stage, that gives you multiple things of which you can do that you can convert at different bit levels. But this is a very interesting structure because if you think about it, this is a, this is a full ADC. It's almost the same complexity as a ramp ADC, but you know certainly it has a fact, faster order. So if you can do some things with the accuracy, there's some great things that are possible here.